good afternoon good afternoon everyone uh, i hope all of you are uh, doing safe uh, and healthy at home uh, these are the unprecedented times uh, of uh, i would say call, the phase 2 of uh, the covid we were inching actually backward to the offices uh, you know due to the work from home fatigue uh, over last one year uh, only to realize that the new covid strain uh, is pushing us all back to our nest again work from home will continue to stay for a while and which may mean that the enterprises have to rethink on how they actually ventured into uh, creating a work from uh, home or work from remote environment and continue to optimize it in mind right uh, covid 19 obviously also has uh, forced many of the companies to fast track on this transformation journey and also has accelerated the need to create digital work spaces especially remote workforce my name is harnath babu i am the cio for kpmg in india i'm going to be conducting the master class today on how to create a frictionless uh, digital working experience for employees so what goes into building in uh, an, an enterprise digital workplace strategy according to a survey approximately 45% of the employees today globally still face regular difficulties getting basic questions answered about their uh, you know uh, benefits and resolving workplace uh, equipment issues right it's about empowering employees to uh, you know have the best experience and so that there are there, there is an imperative for the enterprises uh, to create the work uh, you know digital workplace where people can collaborate and get things done without uh, you know need to commute to the work it is important to establish a road map and blueprint to build a virtual workplace with all the required technology and tools team should be able to collaborate as well as participate in enterprise social uh, events you know seamlessly so being from the knowledge industry uh, at kpmg we prepared a digital workplace strategy uh, quite a while ago right and when we hit when we were hit by the pandemic uh, situation uh, we were not really taken up by surprise right because the the environment was very well enabled or the enterprise was very well enabled to deal with the uh, the covid scenario right uh, and we also considered implementation of advanced technologies like robotic process automation to machine learning and chatbots to make sure that we are giving the next generation world class uh, you know uh, working environment uh, for employees especially keeping in mind uh, the productivity of the employees one of the good examples that i can uh, take here is the, the whole chatbot uh, uh, you know uh, for some self services we started back in 2016 uh, i would say 2016 2017 when we said why an employee has to be dependent on a physical human being to address the queries or address the you know uh, tickets Uh, that the person would have specifically around, let's say, IT. So it started as a pilot, but got extended uh, to other functions as well. So as we speak, uh, we have uh, approximately 18 different kind of bots that are actually used by the employees today in the firm to do self-service, which obviously has created a new experience for the employees. Uh, we also venture into what we call collaboration 2.0. Being a being in the knowledge industry, uh, very heavy on collaboration. Uh, you know. Uh, Uh, requirements or collaboration uh, technologies we started uh, the journey uh, some time back uh, on you know enhancing our collaboration capabilities we moved from fixed desks which typically are uh, you know uh, prevalent in many of the organizations today to uh, what we call as uh, open collaboration spaces which means that employees can walk into the office spend time collaborate with colleagues and just move on right we also brought in the idea of um, hot desking which means that you don't really need to have a desk fixed right so you could just walk into the office choose the seat that you want to sit in would we'll do your work and move on right i think that's the kind of flexibility that we uh, built over last couple of uh, you know years uh, as the pandemic started uh, hitting uh, most of the organizations so we also started focusing on uh, what we call uh, uh, you know uh, the cloud first strategy right so we started really rethinking on how we are deploying technology uh within the enterprise how are we leveraging the cloud uh, you know to to the uh, to the maximum right and uh, we started introducing more emerging technologies around collaboration uh, and seamless communication across the enterprise we are very heavy on collaboration as we speak uh, being in a consulting industry we will collaborate among ourselves we collaborate uh, with our uh, clients as well uh, which may mean that we are we are using technologies like zoom teams and various other technologies being offered by uh, microsoft suite uh, let's say m365 or office 65 right to provide seamless working remote environment uh, we also enabled our employees uh, uh, to to access the enterprise services on mobile 
which means that they can access uh, not only collaboration platforms but also are able to edit uh, documents uh, you know and and make uh, i would say proposals for clients or deliverables for clients while they are they are on the move so i think some of these capabilities have really given us that edge when it comes to working from remote uh one important investment that we did uh, last year while we were dealing all of us were dealing with covid situation was uh, you know creating an app uh, on uh, low code no code platform uh, what we called as safe uh, at work which is being used for uh, you know allowing employees to uh, you know come to the office after they uh, uh, book a seat online they are supposed to uh, give the information about their health and well being practically on a weekly basis to make sure that the firm is having a clear view of who is where and how are they uh, doing right across the country that right? people have moved across different uh, uh, states when the, when the lockdown happened last year right and they continue to stay wherever they are uh, also establishing a, a clear cut change management uh, you know process is important right when you making large or let's say it's changes to a large enterprise like this you would need to have a very clear change management uh, strategy because you yeah, i mean it's not about few hundreds or few thousands it's about i mean we as a firm today in the country get 27000 people strong and making any change of the sort would mean that people have to seamlessly adopt the new technology that means you need to have a very very strong change management capabilities we've been investing on these change management capabilities we are giving uh, you know a, a frequent uh, communication uh, to our employees to make sure that they are they are able to understand uh, what's happening uh, from a technology rollout perspective how the technology can really help them uh, you know uh, improve their productivity right uh, one important thing uh, which is again uh, you know when it comes to designing a digital workplace is security right so when you are having people sitting outside the office it's not any more sitting inside the office it's about sit- people sitting outside the office sitting anywhere they are more vulnerable to cyber security threats so how do you continue to uh you know uh, make your people aware that they should be vigilant how do you continue to secure your assets which are working from remote and i think some of these capabilities obviously uh, have to be uh, really thought through when it comes to building a digital workplace strategy uh digital workplace strategy also uh, consists of one important element which is the experience of the employee right it's about providing while you would have brought in a lot of uh, Uh, technology but i think it's important to have consistent experience when it comes to uh, you know uh, uh, the the digital workplace uh, and employees when they are accessing from wherever they are so it's uh, what we call from a uh, uh, you know b2c environment we say uh, omni channel experience or consistent experience for customers i think it equally applies to the employees right so when they are accessing any application which is supposed to be within the enterprise or uh, it's supposed to be uh, you know uh, for either for self servers or uh, for uh, assisting clients there has to be consistency in the way they are accessing technology and you know uh, and, and the productivity can obviously be taken care of so it's about uh, it's about uh, you know uh, empowering the employees with integrated platforms instead of having uh, you know broken silo uh, siloed approach from an applications point of view you need to invest in creating digital workflows which will allow you to not only uh you know uh, integrate the processes but also give you a very seamless experience uh, from an employee perspective uh the second thing that you can look at from an experience point of view is considering the need for the day right it's about the mobility it's about uh, uh, uh virtual agents that typically people are using in their own personal life so how do you continue to have similar experience uh, that they are uh, having in their personal lives to the professional life so the consistency remains between personal and professional as well uh we also have uh, uh just to take an example from our point of view we also have launched uh, an initiative called uh, you know uh, uh, ease my tech which is basically focusing on uh, you know uh, complete hire to retire uh, uh, you know cycle of employees right uh, starting from pre boarding to uh, exit of the employee to the time he becomes the alumnus of the uh, firm every experience is thought through right uh, thought through every touch point from a technology point has been thought through and uh, those interventions have uh, you know uh, or we have brought in those interventions to make sure that this consistency in the way people are accessing technology right uh, which which includes and not limited to let's say user interfaces as i said digital workflows as i said you know mobile technologies right uh, uh, allowing people to access cloud environments and etc and 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 as you as you create that experience for employees i think it's equally important for people to have uh, you know uh, uh, 
to stay productive right i think one of the biggest challenges that uh, you know uh, most of the uh, uh, employers or organizations are facing today is how do you continue to measure the productivity of the employee right while they're working from home i think it's all about uh, you know uh, trust right so uh, i think you know, cbi as an organization we believe that employees are uh, sensitive about uh, their their work right and uh, they understand their responsibilities and that's again it's the uh, trust relationship between the employer and the employee but i think one of the important factors if you really are looking at uh, you know working from home from a continuity uh, perspective uh, i think it's important to continue to measure the productivity of the employee i think as i said trust is the most important factor uh, when you are allowing your employees to work from home right it's important to set the expectations with the employee that can communicate the objectives very clearly if no objectives uh, set for the employee obviously you will you will have leakages right so i think it's important to set the expectations very clearly establish a very uh, clear team code of conduct to, to make sure there's consistency right so you can't have different team members thinking differently and delivering differently there has to be a team code of conduct which they're supposed to follow uh one of the important things that we have learned uh, uh, in, in last uh, i would say uh, one year year and a half uh, again uh, because of the pandemic that that has come i would say got uh, that got accelerated is communication is one of the key aspect when it comes to people working from remote constant uh, being con- in, in constant touch with your employees clearly communicating uh, what is right uh, what is right for the firm what is right for the project that you're doing uh and what is right for the team right in, in terms of team spirit but i think this there has to be constant communication that has to happen with the employees um uh, there are few companies which are investing in technologies to track how employees are spending their time on the machine right how much time they are spending on uh, meetings or uh let's say uh, working on a particular software and things like that but um, i think uh, that that may sometimes raise a privacy concern right and again as i said it's about uh, trust so we are uh, uh, in in kpmg we are allowing people to do self analysis of their own work we use a, a platform called my analytics which is uh, you know it's a cpi based platform which is actually helping employees to figure out how much time they're spending on emails to uh, you know meetings to collaborating with other colleagues right uh, or uh, how much are they spending uh, time networking and things like that right? and again it's for their own uh, uh, you know benefit because it also kind of gives you suggestions around where to focus uh which are the times that that is available you know uh, uh, what all, what what all follow ups finally uh that they should have done uh, you know and it's a, it's a very intuitive platform that we have and it's again very self help i would say a platform for employees to continue to stay productive right and uh, the the idea is uh, not limited to only uh, self help or uh, you know tools but also continue to do you know uh, scrum uh, scrum calls one on one status updates i think some of those uh you know continue to remain uh, as you uh, as you were about you know working work from remote uh see i think the idea is not to create much of a differentiation between when you are physically present uh, uh you know in the offices versus when you work from remote so try to get as much of that cultural aspect uh, or the, the the processes that you are following when you are in the offices to the remote working try to make it more close so that people don't really find it very difficult to adopt uh, or continue to stay uh, you know work in work from home uh another important uh, thing you know i think we briefly discussed uh, about it is the productivity challenges with you know online workspaces right so i think uh, online workspaces are not deemed considered as as uh, effective uh, there are uh, obviously uh, uh, remote working challenges uh, while while we said how to stay productive how to create an experience but i think it's important to uh, you know uh, also look at some of the uh, nuances of the uh, i would say or remote working challenges that are there when you when you work from remote uh, some of them that i can think is uh, you know uh, excessive work which is basically uh, you know people tend to uh, start at a time and end at a time without even you know uh, realizing that uh, they have go work right so and again uh, and, and again there was there was there was an opportunity for people to uh, i mean in the earlier times uh, people to go out Uh, spend time with family or spend time with friends and, and things like that but i think somewhere that's that's being lost because people are trying to spend more and more time uh, you know uh, with work right uh, obviously we'll have to find ways to deal with uh, if, if it is you know managing the calendar to your appointments uh, 
create that boundaries between which is basically temporal and physical boundaries between work and personal life. Right? I think that's important. Another thing which uh, people are finding difficult is to prioritize work. Right? Everything just comes in as an urgent or uh, you know high priority. I think it's important to set uh, you know limited number of tasks that you could do so that quality of the work is not suffering. And uh, possibly uh, you know try to see if we can install uh, you know distraction. Uh, or I would say distraction limitation tools, right? which typically are used by, uh, you know, uh, I mean, at least personally I've experienced uh, on my own, you can go on your Android phones, you can go to uh, a setting called Zen mode, right? And then you can practically say that I'm not going to be looking at many of the uh, applications when, when I'm when doing the work, right? There are interruptions at home, you have family, you have kids and things like that. So I think it's important to draw some lines, create clear communication, set expectations with the family. Uh, I think one of the important uh, issue that we have seen uh, is as more and more people are moving out, uh, you know, uh, uh, towards remote working or moving uh, into remote working and moving out of offices, there's a sense of loneliness which is set both organizations as well as employees to figure out a way so that they are socially engaged, be it online or uh, or, or or some way of form of the other, which obviously is a safe way of doing it, but certainly you have to have uh, social uh, social enabled. Uh, there are communication issues. People feel that they are left out of uh, a communication uh, loop. I think some of these things can be addressed, right? I mean, these, these are all, can, this all can happen through uh, conversation. And one of the biggest challenges as you're working from remote, which is again, most of the time ignored, is the whole tech hiccups, right? So you're working from remote, you may have a problem with your broadband to your laptop to, it could be anything, right? So, or maybe a security patch or whatever, right? So I think you would have those challenges. But I think, I think it's important to continue to keep in mind some of these productivity challenges and make sure that you are uh, you are able to you know manage the uh, tech hiccups. Um, I think the next uh, uh, important and, and I would say the most important thing is uh, securing your uh, you know operations. Uh, we are working in an environment where there's excessive uh, you know uh, I would say the cyber uh, security threats that are coming in, especially when people are working from home. Uh, you know, when you're sitting in in uh, an enterprise in an office, you're more secure. It's a perimeter of security that is in play. But when it comes to people working from remote, uh, there are challenges uh, related to security. They they are more prone to phishing attacks, cyber cyber security attacks. It's like you know leaving a candle in the wind, right? I mean, uh, unless the person is aware uh, what needs to be done, I think uh, from a security perspective, we are practically taking chances, right? So there has to be a very clear strategy around uh, security, securing your operations. Um, I I would say uh, there are three key areas that you need to focus on when it comes to security, and especially when you're trying to build seamless operations from a security perspective. One is people. You have to help people understand the importance of uh, uh, security, create communications to the employees, make them aware that what sort of security challenges are there, um, and continue to monitor high risk users. An enterprise, they have low risk users, they are high risk users. So I think there has to be constant monitoring of high risk users. You need to get in the best of technology to make sure that you are able to get the patch uh, of your end endpoints, to get the VPN, get uh, you know uh, real time alerts onto your machines, get data leakage. I think that's one of the biggest challenges, especially when you're working from remote. Right? Look for shadow IT. I think uh, as people work from remote, there is a bit of a liberty when they're trying to work uh, on various projects. Uh, shadow IT tends to grow. I think it's important to look for shadow IT. And we can, uh, if possible, device virtualization, because again, that's one of the important things that you can focus on as you, uh, as you would want to have a centralized control when it comes to endpoint uh, safety and security. Uh, from a processes point of view, uh, I think it's important to think of resiliency as you are uh, you know, uh, working in a, in a remote environment. Uh, you need to have remote working tools and IT support to ensure that uh, you know uh, uh, employees are not inconvenienced. From a security point of view, they are able to report and a remediation can be taken immediately and they are able to respond immediately if there is a problem. You need to continue to test your DR capabilities because that's again important when you're working from remote or working uh, in a scenario like this because you can potentially have a lockdown or an inaccessibility of a facility or a service that can happen so you need to have a very robust dr to make sure that the business continues to work right and you need to have uh, you know one of the biggest uh, i would say factors here which is again ignored by many organizations managing the third party security right i think most of the organizations today would definitely have third parties working with them I think that's another area where uh, you know uh, the organizations have to be think through on how do they manage the uh, you know third-party security. 
Uh, so I think it's 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 not about uh, as, as I mentioned, it's not it's not only limited to the creation of uh, experience, consistent experience on security uh, uh, or uh, let's say productivity challenges when we are working from remote. But there are uh, you know uh, cultural aspects that an organization needs to really think. Right, I think the very idea of remote working wasn't there in the past. Uh, people had to quickly go understand uh, you know how uh, you know uh, how how remote working can continue to make sure that the business uh, uh, is continuing with us. But it's all about the mindset change. So as we were trying to get back to the offices, I think it's important to really embrace the new ways of working. We I would still call it as hybrid working as things get back to normal. I think there's a cultural shift that has to happen. It's about the change management that I was mentioning earlier, right? Uh, it's about uh, you know. Uh, uh, Managing some of the uh, human aspects around, you know, uh, combating the isolations, managing the productivity, right? And one important thing is, as employees continue to work from remote, uh, you know, or uh, work from home, the morale uh, levels have to be always kept up. I think one of the biggest lessons that we've learned in last one year is the leadership uh, has to have constant communication with their employees so that they're able to, uh, you know, uh, spend time. Uh, with uh, you know, that they're able to spend time with the employees in some shape or the other uh, sort of form uh, online and keep them motivated. I think one of the biggest, uh, as I said, learning that we have also uh, gained is uh, you know, uh, employees look up to their leaders, right? When it uh, is when it is in happy situation or crisis situation. So I think it's important for leaders, leadership or the leaders of the company to you know, stay in constant touch, write blogs, keep communicating. And uh, post about uh, these trends of people, right? I think people have really, uh, it's, it's a big change for everyone, right? So I think realizing, realizing the, uh, the talent, realizing the efforts of people and then put it, putting it up, right? I think we have been, we've been really uh, practicing that a lot in our work, right? We've been talking about, uh, you know, uh, what are the strengths that each one of us has, how we have dealt with it, how we have covered the whole journey, who's really contributed. I think it's, it's about the moral boosting that typically happens. I think we've been, as I said, we've been in the forefront of some of these initiatives. We've been finding avenues to, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, to collaborate. We, uh, there are more knowledge sharing sessions. There are what we call as health and uh, wellness sessions that we've been, you know, trying to uh, create for people so that they are not really uh, feeling left out and things like that. Right? So, uh, and we also deployed a so enterprise social platform so that so that people are not really disconnected, right? That uh, when when they're working from. So I think some of these important aspects uh, have uh, really uh, changed, uh, or I would say, uh, have to be thought when when you are uh, looking at a work from uh, you know, uh, home or work from uh, remote. And it's all it's all about creating the frictionless digital experience, right? So while you are uh, saying that you have best of technology from our remote working, best of security from remote working, at the end of the day, it's the human uh, you know uh, human angle that needs to be thought. So it's about motivations, it's about culture, and things like that. So I think. Uh, I, I would say uh, no digital strategy is successful until you have the right uh, you know, uh, human, uh, right mindset uh, uh, from, from a change perspective. So I'll just stop my presentation. Thank you so much for hearing me out uh, and, and the patient hearing. Uh, in case you have any queries, happy to uh, address that. Uh, thank you so much. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.